principles makes us experience karmic results. Uh, just like good acts result in kar good karma later on, bad acts or sinful acts result in bad karma later on. So the mind is not smart enough to recognize this. Therefore, we need to hear from authorities through the scriptures and then use our intelligence to avoid actions that cause bad results in the future. Uh, so mind and intelligence, they both work on knowledge. The mind works on one kind of knowledge, uh, and the intelligence works on another kind of knowledge. Mind works on empirical knowledge, and intelligence works on speculative knowledge. Uh, so these kinds of knowledge are good in the material world, when we're trying to attain certain material benefits or goals or results. But when it comes to spiritual life, even our intelligence is not very good uh, because it's hard for us to understand the cause and effect relationship between, let's say, chanting the holy name and the bliss that we experience. Uh, for this, spiritual consciousness is necessary. And the spiritual consciousness is beyond both the mind and the intelligence. Actually, all consciousness is spiritual. But when our consciousness is full of material objects, then it takes on those material qualities. Because the mind, or sorry, the consciousness, is just like a mirror. Uh, if I have a mirror, and I hold it up, let's say, to this wall, that you can see behind me, uh, the mirror will turn brown just like the wall isn't it? But if I hold the mirror up to the sun, then the mirror will start to shine just like the sun. Or if I hold the mirror up to this white shirt, it'll turn white. So a mirror adopts the quality of whatever is reflected in it. It's, a mirror is agnostic. It doesn't have any color. Uh, but it'll show the color of what is reflected in it. Similarly, consciousness doesn't have any particular material quality in itself, because consciousness is pure and transcendental. So consciousness simply mirrors whatever uh, qualities are there in the objects of the consciousness. And when we direct our consciousness toward material things, it becomes contaminated with material qualities. When we direct our consciousness toward spiritual things, it becomes purified and begins to display its original qualities. Now, what are the original qualities of consciousness? Sat, Chit, and Ananda. Sat means eternal existence. Chit means pure knowledge. Uh, not jnana, but knowledge of things as they are. Intrinsic knowledge. And Ananda means eternal bliss. Meaning that it becomes a source of its own happiness without requiring anything extra, external. Try to understand. Consciousness is self-referential. Uh, it's recursive. You can uh, observe your own consciousness with your consciousness. And when you do this, this is called meditation. So when you direct your consciousness toward a spiritual object, which could be your own consciousness, for example, you will discover that it automatically becomes happy. You become happy because your consciousness is directed toward a spiritual object by your will. This is an act of will. It doesn't depend on knowledge. Similarly, if you direct your consciousness towards Krishna, Krishna's name, Krishna's form, Krishna's qualities, his pastimes, his uh, uh, place of residence, his associates, his anything, <laughs> anything about Krishna. Uh, if you direct your consciousness toward Krishna by an act of will, you will discover that your consciousness becomes blissful. Uh, Sat, Chit, Ananda. Because Krishna is Sat, Chit, Ananda. So that's the principle of devotional service. When our consciousness is purely directed toward Krishna, without any mixture of anything else, that is pure devotional service. 
When our consciousness is mixed, either with karma, jnana, or uh, yoga. Oh, I forgot to describe yoga. Yoga means the attainment of mystical powers. Uh, but why do we need mystical powers if we have Krishna? Actually, Krishna is the doer, Krishna is the knower, and Krishna is the enjoyer. So when we associate with Krishna, we automatically do, know, and enjoy through him. Huh? Actually, anything that we do know or enjoy happens through Krishna, but when we're in material consciousness, our intelligence is covered and we can't see it. Nevertheless, Krishna is there in everything, and he's causing all of these things to happen, and we're simply along for the ride. Huh? Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita chapter 16 that the spirit soul is riding in the material body as if on a machine. Uh, yantra, the machine. So just like, uh, I mean actually the uh, image of Krishna driving the chariot and Arjuna is, is riding as the passenger in the chariot, uh, this is also very instructive. Krishna is controlling the senses. The horses are the senses. Huh? The chariot is the body. And Krishna is the super soul directing the senses and the body. Arjuna is simply the passenger. Yet, in the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna says, Krishna, please take the chariot out into the middle between the two armies so I can see who is ready here, here to fight. And Krishna does it. He takes it out. So you see the relationship between the soul and Krishna? Krishna is actually controlling the body. And we're simply riding in the body. But due to Krishna being our eternal friend, he uh, helps us to realize our desires. Now, in material life, our desires are bogus. They're nonsense. They're stupid. <laughs> Why? Because... When we desire material things, we simply cause ourselves suffering. Huh? Why should I desire material things? Because it's simply going to result in my having to take birth in the material world again and go through all that suffering. That's horrible. So we should desire only spiritual things. And when we desire only spiritual things, that's pure devotional service. Huh? When we only want Krishna's happiness. That's pure love or pure devotional service. Anya bilakshita shunyam. Without any other mixture of any other thing. Karma, jnana, or yoga. Pure devotional service. That's the standpoint. That's the starting point. That's the origin. That's the zero point. That's the uh, coordinate system of Bhaktira Samrita Sindhu, the nectar of devotion, is based on this concept of pure devotional service. Everything is measured from there. Uh, I call it the top-down view. Uh, in Bhagavad Gita, and even to a certain extent in Srimad Bhagavatam, we are looking at the bottom-up view, uh, taking all the parts and pieces of devotional service and Vedic life, and building them up, higher and higher and higher into this big picture. And then when we finally get to the top, we, we understand the concept of pure devotional service. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu starts from the concept of pure devotional service, and then it looks at the whole picture from the top. Okay? It's necessary for us in the beginning to start from the bottom because we don't have any transcendental knowledge. So we have to build up that knowledge step by step. But Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu assumes that we already have gone through that process and begins to examine what we have built up from the top point of view of transcendental knowledge, pure devotional service. There's another nice definition of pure devotional service in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 3, which says that pure devotional service is ahaituki apratihata. Ahaituki apratihata means it is uh, continuous and unmotivated. 
So the, the quality of our devotional service has to be that it's continuous, uh, 24 hours a day, and unmotivated. That means we're not trying to get anything for ourselves. We're only trying to please Krishna. I know this in the beginning of devotional service, this sounds impossible. Uh, I have so many problems, I have so many needs, I have so many desires, how can I just please Krishna? Well, that's why it's a mystery. That's why devotional service is, is very rarely attained. That's why it's so difficult to understand. Uh, you're not the first one who noticed that it's difficult to understand, okay? <laughs> it's difficult to understand because we're coming from this background of material consciousness. So, you please hear very patiently, and we will try to explain all these mysteries. So the first thing, the first